I can go ahead and get our uh, presentation up here. Okay, no time like the present, right? Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. I don't know if it's appropriate to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I think we've got some people from multiple time zones here, which is exciting. Um, my name is Landon Phillips. I am the co-founder of Slingshot, and I'm joined today by my esteemed colleague, Phoebe Voss, our, our phenomenal creative director here as well. And uh, we're excited to, to share some insights that we have learned over the years of how to host uh, an ideation workshop, specifically one that's focused on, on ideation, on, on creativity, on brainstorming, because um, as you know, CEO members and university members, I know we've all kind of coordinated our fair share of events, um, but this specific kind of niche is something that Phoebe and I are, are both really, really passionate about and have had many successes and some not so successes over the years that we hope we can share and uh, you can learn from some some of our uh, best best practices and especially how to integrate um, this little thing called slingshot that we want to tell you a little bit about today to hopefully take those workshops uh, to the next level that can really get people excited and catalyzed about ideas about uh, innovation about creativity and help them feel empowered to take the next steps so, First off, you know, a, a quick primer on what Slingshot is. Slingshot is the, the fastest, easiest way to start your next big idea. Uh, it's a web app that basically asks you a series of questions, and then in about half an hour, um, it generates for you this beautiful, shareable website that you can pitch from, you can share with mom and dad, you can do any number of things with, but importantly, it gets you to that first big milestone to celebrate, which is your idea went from up here to some digital artifact that you now have that you can share and and kind of start taking next steps with it's got three major components create build and share create helps uh you make an idea up from nothing uh it takes less than five minutes that's the one that's really especially helpful for things like these innovation workshops when you're going for say you know quantity of ideas or you just want to get people excited about a number of different problems or certain constraints and and kind of just starting to get some things out on the board and then build it takes one of those deals ideas and elaborates on them so that you get the full, you know, shareable website product at the end of it. And then of course, share helps you do just that, share your idea uh, with the rest of the world. Now we designed it to be really easy to accommodate any number of different uses. It's very mobile friendly. So um, because of that, there's not a lot of text input. Um, we wanted it to feel like the, the anti-business plan template has all the great benefits and value that those bring without any of the nasty baggage and, and kind of boring expectations that, that those buzzwords might elicit in you. Um, because we wanted to minimize the amount of text input, we have all these good sliders and engagement materials um, that get you to in, interact with the content in a helpful way that really streamlines the process. But at the same time, still delivering something that's actually of value, has meat on it. It's not, you know, just a, a BuzzFeed quiz of, of a business plan template. It actually helps you decide things like how to calculate your value, how to go after the right customer and things like that. And then at the end, you get this beautiful, nice example of a animated website uh, that you can, like we said, you can pitch from, you can even send it asynchronously and it's all kind of self-explained enough so that uh, even if you don't have the time to pitch it and explain it in person, the website does a good enough job encapsulating your idea to help share it with more people that way. So to help us learn how we can actually get started in, in setting up a successful workshop, first, you gotta, you gotta pack the house. You gotta, gotta get people to come up. And that is no small feat in itself. Uh, so Phoebe is going to share with us some great examples of how you can get people in the door. Phoebe? Yeah. So as you all know about marketing, the most important thing when you're marketing a business is knowing your customer, knowing who you're talking to. And I think we sometimes forget that whenever we're planning an event or even something small like a meeting. And so we really want to emphasize getting to know your community, your peers, taking the time to learn exactly within the realm of ideation. What do they need? What, what can you tap into? Are they looking for connections for internships and jobs? Are they looking for mentors? Do they have a lot of ideas um, and they don't know how to get them out there? There's, do they have businesses already and they need help 
launching them or building them there or growing them. There's tons of different needs that individuals could have within this realm and a lot of different niche areas. And if you, if you take the time to learn what you need, then you can incorporate the value of your event from the start. And you can talk about what you're offering. And if, if you've, if you hit the nail on the head and you're offering something that people need, then chances are people are going to show up. So then you want to start early and, and you want to start not too early because you don't want to kind of get ahead of yourself. We recommend for something like this, maybe starting like two weeks in advance. And that way you can get it on people's calendars, but there's, there's a certain level of pressure that we start to build with these kinds of things. I think entrepreneurship can be scary or just the concept of, of a, an event, a summit can be scary. And so we actually don't like pushing it too far in advance because we don't want to make it inaccessible. We want it to feel like something that you could show up to and so that that hitting hitting the sweet spot on the calendar of when to start talking about this is actually really important. And then additionally, you just want to cut to the chase, kind of like what I was saying earlier with knowing your audience. Once you figure out what value this event is adding, what what value is this workshop specifically adding to your community, you want to just cut to the chase and market that value. You don't want to talk about fluff. You don't want to talk about um, any any other incentives you just you want to give them exactly what they need that being said don't forget about the power of shiny objects we have learned as a team that shiny objects are probably the most valuable thing you can incorporate into your invitation people love treats they love cookies they love pizza they love ipads whatever you have the capacity to offer um you're really you're really gonna just create excitement. And I think part of talking about ideation is building this buzz. And so like, like I've been saying, you want to find the balance between not putting too much pressure on it, but also building this buzz because you want people to be in a good space when they enter. And we're actually, I know it kind of sounds silly to talk about treats and it sounds like, yeah, duh, you want to offer chips that that's kind of basic. Um, I think that we're actually going to get into when you can use these treats to help your workshop, when you can use snacks to actually push networking. Um, so there's a lot more to that than you might think. After, so, after you market that. it, you want to format it. So once you figure out what you want to say, you want to figure out how to say it, and Landon's going to take us off on that. Mm -hmm. So after we have followed, you know, Phoebe's sage advice and we have packed the house, uh, how do we make sure that we structure uh, the actual composition of the workshop in such a way that actually can lead to the most impact, lead to the most ideation of, of generation or generation of ideas or uh, unique advancements or people getting excited enough to maybe even start a company? Um, as Phoebe mentioned, it, as important it is to know your audience, it's also important to know your space. Um, the type of workshop and the format that you're going after um, shouldn't just kind of be like a default one size fits all sort of a thing. Um, even just the, the, you know, the venue location of if you're doing an lecture hall versus a classroom versus someone's, you know, the intimacy of someone's home uh, really changes a, a lot of it. The biggest kind of split, of course, um, is knowing, you know, the, the pros and cons and strengths and weaknesses of just doing a remote one versus an in-person one. And a lot of this is, is pretty straightforward, but um, a good reminder is, is anytime we've done remote th things, we have to cull a lot of the good stuff that we wanna cover and are excited about covering just because the strain of attention, as we all well know, having been in Zoom for the past several years of our lives, um, mitigates that somewhat. But there's benefits as well. You know, obviously it allows a lot more, allows you can to record things like we're doing today and you can view it at a later date. Uh, it allows um, you to offer this to more people than would normally be able to attend in person. But just don't get a little too excited and offer or try to cram in too much. Uh, you really want to take into account people's um, mental capacity to focus. And so you want to leave some sporadic um, ability for them to engage in con content themselves. 
uh, one of the ways we want to try to practice what we preach with that today is to say, hey, if you have any suggestions, comments, or, or questions about specific sections, please let us know in the chat. And in fact, at the end, we have a couple of things that we want to sort of flip and have uh, take some feedback from, from people here because there's a lot of collective wisdom in this room right now, and we want to be able to, to take advantage of that. Uh, when it comes to in-person events, obviously knowing the space as well, but but probably most importantly, creating and cultivating, uh, you know, don't neglect the vibe. You want to create and cultivate this, this energy in the room that's very difficult to describe or, or replicate outside of certain moments in time where you start to feed off this collective excited energy. Um, that doesn't happen naturally. Even small things like music selection, venue selection, um, how are you structuring things to build trust and a sense of belonging in your community and how you can do that in your workshop really makes a big difference in terms of how fruitful these things are and how comfortable people are with sharing these ideas. So a big thing to consider in, in pursuing that, pursuing that level of trust and comfort is that you want to avoid things that have to do with light switch brainstorming. Uh, what we mean by that is like anytime you shine a light on somebody and say, okay, be creative, go now. It's probably not going to work out so well. It's hard to get your own brain to do that, to say, okay, brain, give me, you know, let me fill in this empty, you know, page with brilliance. That's very hard to just turn off and on. And it doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but what a lot of people attribute to chance or just a stroke of genius is actually like a series of small little steps that you can take to actually replicate the type of conditions that allow your brain to make these novel connections and to be more creative. I'm a big fan of studying the actual research and brain science behind uh, what makes creativity tick. Uh, we've done plenty of presentations on that, but one of the best things we've had in terms of structuring our workshops to facilitate this in a short amount of time is knowing the difference between what we call low stakes activities and high stakes activities. High stakes, that's the hard thing. That's where you have the, the light shown on you to say, okay, describe your brilliant idea, go. That's hard. That's asking a lot. What you're really asking someone to do is say, okay, do I feel confident enough in this idea that it's well thought enough enough that I can share it? I don't know like, if I trust these people in this room, if they're going to help me, if they're going to collaborate with me, if they're going to rip it apart. Um, I don't know if they have their, my best interest in mind. Are they going to steal my idea? So you're asking a lot of these subtle behind the scenes questions when you try and kind of force a moment like that. But if you start slow, you start with low stakes, you can create that atmosphere we talked about that's more conducive to, to brainstorming. Uh, ironically, a lot of people, when you're trying to design these things, okay, I want to be the best CEO chapter leader I can be, or I want to be the best you know, community leader in this college or this innovation center that I can be. I want to make sure that all the ideas and output we have is just top tier quality. We're making life-changing companies or products or whatever, and that's great. But counterintuitively, you actually want to lower the bar of what counts as good enough or clever enough to share before you can reach for that top tier stuff. So by lowering the stakes of what counts as good enough actually leads to better quantity of ideas, which then leads to better quality of ideas. My favorite example of a low stakes uh, way to do this is a class in MIT. It used to be one of the most popular classes you could take as a freshman on toy design. And first day of class, professor comes in and he says, okay, whether you like it or not, I need all of you over the course of the semester to think of yourselves as being creative, artistic, and capable designers in a number of different fields. And a lot of you are coming in with different levels of comfort with any of those words, um, and that's okay. So what we're going to do just to kind of clear the air is we're going to redesign a logo for this class day one right now. And just to kind of remove whatever artistic burden you may be placing on yourselves, we're going to do it with finger paint. And so there's this kind of like odd murmur that goes to the crowd. It's like, we're freshmen here at MIT, you know, surrounded by brilliance and geniuses and we're finger painting. Okay, sure. Here we go. And then just before they start, the professor says, oh, uh, one more thing. Uh, you have to use your neighbor's fingers. And what this does is great. One, it kind of makes for a potentially awkward, like holding a stranger's hand and Oh, okay, so what's your major? Okay, this is fun. And you kind of have this collective sigh of relief because one, if everybody's idea submission of a logo is now kind of equally 
messy and blobby. There's, it's low stakes. I'm not worried about being judged by my submission because we're all kind of equally working with the same challenging materials. Two, I'm starting to trust my neighbor a little bit more and develop a sense of collaboration, lay that foundation because I know the more uh, collaborative and helpful I am whenever they're holding my hand, hopefully the more collaborative and helpful they'll be when I need to hold, hold there. So they need me right now and I'm gonna need them in a minute. And it's in both of our mutual best interest if we help each other out. So little subtle, almost kind of silly things like that can actually help start to lay a foundation of that trust and uh, belonging that leads to people getting their brains warmed up enough, getting their confidence warmed up enough that they can then perform better at the higher stakes challenges later on. Now, as Phoebe said, we all know the almighty power of snacks are super helpful. Um, I'm sure none of you would have ever, ever considered doing this, but in my college days, I may have shown up to a couple of free events that, that advertised free food, saw that it was laid out, helped myself to a small amount of it, looked around, and if I decided it wasn't for me, quickly left out the door. And it's a shame to admit, but you know, sometimes that happens. And honestly, that's not even the worst thing. Sometimes you just want to get people in the space. You just want to get people to come and hopefully they can start a conversation there and that's good enough. But as Phoebe mentioned earlier, it's not just about having the free snacks to get them in the door, knowing when to kind of unleash the snacks and use them with intentionality of how you structure a workshop can actually really help. Um, when we were designing Slingshot, uh, early, early in the prototype phases, we didn't have anything digital, no, no app yet. It's all pen and paper. We ran a workshop at a university to get some feedback on some of these early tools. And one of the best things we did was we had a moment where everyone came to this kind of central whiteboard and we said, okay, I want you to write your name and write at least three skills that you currently have or experiences you've had that are relevant to entrepreneurship. And then at least two that you want to have, that you want to develop or that you're looking for in a business partner, co-founder, whatever. So everybody's all kind of writing collectively at the same time and they're looking, you know, at each other as they're writing it out. Wow, Phoebe, you got three coding languages under your belt and you already have familiarity with intellectual property. Like this is, I want to talk to you about this. And so as soon as we did that, we said, okay, take the next 15 minutes, go grab some food, get the free pizza. Who knows? If you're lucky, you know, you may strike up a conversation and find your next co-founder in this room right now. And that one kind of activity that sort of primed the the snack time event, cut through a lot of the awkward kind of standing around, you know, with your drink or your soda. You know, okay, so how's it going? You know, what, what year are you? And instead we cut right to the good stuff, which was like, oh man, you said you you launched a company in high school? That's amazing. Like, what what did you do? Like, how did you, how did you get that started? I'd, I'd love to do something like that. And so timing those snacks as you've primed the conversation is super, super helpful. So then, We've, we've packed this, we've packed the house, we've structured it in, intentionally. We start with the low stakes, build our way to high stakes. What are some examples of some of these like higher stakes activities where you are actually to the point where it's like, okay, now here's where we get people to brainstorm. Here's where we get people to think creatively. Um, when Phoebe and I were designing this, this portion, we had a big long list of things we wanted to include, but the things we focused on were specific activities that used slingshot the tool specifically to kind of take things to, to to the next level or improved kind of like the general pen and paper approach in some way or another. Um, and secondly, we couldn't limit ourselves to just the three we want to talk about today. So what we actually ended up doing was keeping several more ideas on there as hidden slides on this deck. And at the end of this presentation, we're going to make this slide available, this, this whole deck available to download so that if you as a, a chapter leader or community leader wanted to kind of browse through a couple of the other lists of how you can use some of these things, all of the presenter notes on the bottom have in-depth descriptions of like how to run the details of these activities in your workshop. Uh, the first one is, is just the simplest one. Um, it's how to use the create portion of Slingshot as an icebreaker. Um, I don't know how many times I, I worked in, for the better part of 10 years in higher ed uh, running an innovation shop at, at Pepperdine University. And I can't tell you how many times we started a new semester, we were teaching a new class, and we had to play two truths and a lie or something, some other equally, in, I guess, engaging could be a generous way to put it, uh, activity to try to get to know people better. Our version of that 
involves using the, the, that create portion of Slingshot, which again, the super short one, you do it in five minutes or less. What it does is it starts to get you ask, asking yourself about what problems you're passionate about solving. But then what it does differently is it actually asks you a lot of very reflective questions about yourself. It asks you things like, you know, what skills are you bringing to the table? What resources do you have available that maybe you overlooked? You know, not just what's in your bank account, but like, well, I have, uh, you know, a brother in accounting. He's pretty good with numbers. Uh, you know, at this university, I have access to a workshop or to a 3D printer, and that could let me to prototype some of my ideas for cheap and kind of helps to remind you, like, actually, you have a lot going for you here. And it creates a lens through which you can view these other problems you're passionate about to kind of help you see which ones you, as a unique person, may be individually better suited to solve than anybody else. And so what it does is it outputs this little succinct, refined problem statement or company description of the company you want to start to solve it. And having that as like either a pre-workshop homework that you finish beforehand and come, come show up with, or since it's so short, you can actually do it in the first five minutes of launching one of these workshops and have that on a name tag showing up or talking to someone who says, hi, my name is Landon, and I'm really passionate about removing single-use plastic from the ocean. That's way more interesting to me to get to know somebody, especially at a new start of a new semester or a new chapter meeting, than just like, oh, guess if I've actually been to Rome or not. Oh, was I lying? I don't know. Like, okay, cool. Uh, I really, I care more about like, what, what do you get excited about? Everybody likes talking to people who are really passionate about something that they want to solve or a company that they want to start. So Create and Slingshot does a great job of doing that. So the next activity game that we thought of really has to do with getting people from zero to one. So something that we're really passionate about at Slingshot, the whole reason that we built Slingshot is that zero to one step, is to target zero to one. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's basically the moment in which someone decides to act, to take action, to go from zero to one. So there's a ton of tools for all the other steps, one to a hundred, once you've kind of started your idea, but there's not a lot to help you go from nothing to something. And sometimes a spark can really happen when we're confined to barriers. Sometimes having all the opportunity in the world is actually more paralyzing than having some structures. So for this game, we want to think inside the box instead of thinking outside the box. And what we're going to do is try to solve a problem with an improvement to an already existing idea. So the rule is that you cannot create anything new. You cannot think of anything that doesn't already exist. You can only improve upon something that has been created. So the problem would be given to everyone. One single problem would be presented. And then everyone in this activity would use Slingshot to come up with a solution based off of something that already exists. So you're basically using the existing solution to cushion the pressure of coming up with something from scratch. But in turn, you are coming up with something in scratch. It's kind of, it's kind of tricking the brain into critical thinking, which is something else that we really like to do because I don't know, we wanna, we wanna make things a little easier to digest. Um, I just think that sometimes rules provide a structure that we can't provide ourselves, especially whenever we're, we're just overwhelmed in general. If, if you give me, hey, solve a problem in the world, uh, okay, I don't know. If you told me, hey, solve a problem, what bothers you whenever in your kitchen when you're cooking dinner, it just, it, it specifies it. And, and we're really about that specific, specificity <laughs> um, when it comes to these activities. So that leads me into our next one, which would be the three card draw. Um, this one also has to do with structure, but there's a little more flexibility for you guys and it becomes as fun or as serious or as in-depth as you want it to be as the leaders. So it also involves a little bit of prep work. You would create three stacks of cards. One of these stacks of cards would have an industry and it would be a different industry per card. And you'd want to have cards for everyone that was gonna be there. 
And then the second stack would be challenges and you'd have different challenges on each of these cards. And then the third stack would be your target audience and you'd have a different target customer per card. Shuffle those all up. And then whenever everyone came in, they would draw three of those cards. So they'd have a random industry, a random challenge and a random target customer. And this could really, really be as specific to your community as you want. So this could be like the industries are departments at your university and the challenges are challenges that you hear students talk about and the audience is specific types of students and, and faculty, or it could be really broad or really silly. It could be like underwater gear and as the industry and the challenge could be like food, fluffy foods aren't, aren't soft enough, you know, there's, there's a lot of flexibility for you guys to, like I said earlier, address the needs of your specific group. Um, but, but the general idea is that you have these three categories. And then once each participant drew, draws the three categories, they would take about 30 minutes to do the complete slingshot build section for this idea. And they would place the three cards in front of their computers after they're finished with the share site, they would pull it up and then everyone would be able to walk around and, and kind of see what we came up with based off of these unique combinations. Um, a, this is just a pretty low stakes way of coming up with genuine high stakes ideas. B, it helps students really think about how specific their ideas need to be and how specific the needs and the problems need to be because as easy as Slingshot is, it really gets into the nitty gritty of why you're solving a certain problem, why that problem is affecting that certain community. And, and specificity is key, as I've been saying. And so it kind of, in this, in this game, you realize, oh, I, I have to get really specific about my industry and my market before I can even get started on, on launching the idea. Um, that is, just to select a few of the activities that that maybe you could offer to just promote this ideation and to promote this creative thinking. I'm really passionate about silliness. I think bringing a, a spirit of silly to your events can can kind of yield some unique results and can empower people to to tap into a non high stakes version of themselves. So after the activities, you want to follow up. Yes, follow up, the, the often neglected and equally important uh, component of a good workshop. One of the things we've talked a lot about today is getting the best results out of people whenever they come to one of these things, but with a longer term view in mind of how do we really lead to a lot more impact just be, you know, beyond the short amount of time we have with people. Um, what? How do you change something from what could be just a one-off I'll try one of these events at my university or I'll try one of these CEO chapter things just to check it out versus somebody becoming like a full-fledged diet and wool follower, member, future leader, president, whatever it may be. Um, a big component of that is following up, following through with making those personal connections with people. Now, the good news is that not only did we try and design Slingshot in a way that it can, it can function as a, a helpful tool during the process of ideation, but it also helps with engagement and follow-up as well. So using the tool itself specifically to say like, hey, I, you know, I, I, I'm going to single this person out here. You know, John, I really appreciate you coming to uh, the meeting. Um, everybody, great, great ideas today. I know we got like a couple of different interesting nuggets that we did and create. Um, see if for, for homework by next week, by next meeting, um, if you can come with just one of those ideas fully fleshed out, um, by running it through Slingshot proper and you get that full share of a website, I'd be really excited to see what additional stuff you add onto it then. But also once we have that, that big milestone achieved, that primes the way for us to talk next steps. You know, if we got from zero to one, great. But this university that we're a part of has all these great entrepreneurship resources available to us. And this can be kind of the first step that you take towards what if we want to start asking, you know, funding questions, or can I use this, this website to help me strike up a conversation with a potential mentor? 
um, and kind of take things to the next level. So that's that's one way you as a chapter leader can you know assign this as as homework or encourage people to do it so that they have this this big milestone of a website to share. But interestingly, this next version using Slingshot and coffee combined uh, is a great method of again that individual connection the relationship building or it's great for universities that are looking for ways to engage in with their alumni network or with mentor networks so as many people as you may have come to your events i guarantee you there is a ton more that are on the fringes outside looking in and for whatever reason they've self-selected out to say wow that looks interesting or you know i always have this idea kicking around in my head that i'd love to do something with someday but I just, I don't know if that's for me. I don't know if that's really my scene. I mean, you know, maybe I even came to an event or two and just, I didn't quite get that connection. Well, as a leader or planner of some of these workshops, you can say, hey, Phoebe, thanks for coming to that, uh, that workshop. You mentioned in the little brainstorming thing we did, you had this really cool idea for that, that app you talked about for, for underwater puffy food making or something. Uh, see, I, I want to hear more about that. You think you have time this week just to grab some coffee? I want to just ask you some questions about the idea. It's pretty low stakes. There's there's no real risk involved. Coffee's easy. And they don't have to like fill out any forms or, you know, be at these this experience to feel like they they can talk about it. You just want to have that connection. So some partners we've already made with Slingshot have started using the program itself is almost like a mentorship in a box or this sort of conversation on rails to say, all right, we'll grab coffee and I'll just sit here and I'll take some notes and I'll ask you a couple of questions. What that person's actually doing is asking questions from Slingshot itself. And then the other person is just kind of dictating what they feel like is just a very conversational uh, way to describe their idea that they're excited about. But then at the end of coffee, I can turn the laptop around and I show Phoebe Hey, that idea we've just been talking about, it's it's real now. It's 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 tangible in the digital ether. You have a website that you can show people, you can get excited about. It it describes something and refined your idea even better than when you first had it. And now, if you want, you can take next steps with it. You can just send it to your mom, see if she's proud of you, do whatever you want. But the fact is, it exists now and you brought this into the world, something that that wasn't there before. And that's that's really exciting. It's a great catalyzing moment to get people to, to follow up, to come back, to, to feel that sense of belonging in your community. And then finally, Slingshot's really good at becoming like a standardization of submissions. So again, a lot of people may be on the outside looking in and, and they don't raise their hand because they say, oh, you know, I actually really like the cool, complicated programs you guys have. Like, I'd love to try like a pitch competition that you do someday or one of the innovation challenges that I heard about at that last workshop you ran, but you know, I'm not really a, a big graphic design person. I don't, I don't have the Google slide skills to like get up there and do the whole song and dance and make the, make a presentation or, or God forbid, a, a whole website for, for my idea. Well, Slingshot does all that legwork for them. And so if you can just say, Hey, instead of filling out like a lengthy business model canvas or a lengthy, you know, custom made Google form, Instead, this is very approachable web app you can do on your phone while you're watching Netflix that, you know, you move some sliders, answer some basic questions about something you're excited or interested about. And then once that's submitted, it's much easier for your panel of judges or you as, as community leaders to kind of review them. Everybody has asked the same questions. Everybody gets this nice, clean standardization of output. And then if you wanted to have them come up and present, you know, as, as semifinalists, they can actually pitch from their own submission. So it's not like it's a, a whole separate process where they have to make a separate deck or anything like that. It's all already done. So it's a great tool to use kind of to standardize that for, for whatever future uh, competitions or, or activities you want to do. So uh, to try and practice what we've preached here, you know, our version of free pizza that you get for, for coming today is some, some delicious digital resources. Uh, we're going to make this, this deck available for download. Uh, we'll have the link available uh, here in the chat momentarily. Uh, again, if you want, you can check it out. You can check out some of the, the hidden slides that we alluded to and hyped up without actually showing. Um, hopefully that'll give you some good uh, resources to start from or, or spark some new ideas for some new innovation workshops of your own. And we'll also want to make sure uh, that we have the exclusive CEO and Slingshot sponsored link. Um, this isn't a, a blanket completely uh, free program for everyone, but we're really happy to be able to offer it through this generous partnership with, with CEO to everyone in attendance today, everyone who's a part of the CEO 
uh, community is is now have given access to this. And so we encourage you, it's it's free to use. You can check it out, um, try out, create, launch some, some quick nuggets of ideas, throw a couple of them through build, tell us what you think, what can be improved, or just share with us your exciting underwater food idea. Who knows? Um, but feel free to, to register and use, use that link while you can. And then finally, as we wrap up, um, we know that it's it's an, a rare opportunity we have to be surrounded with this community of thought leaders, university leaders, CEO chapter leaders who've been in the trenches much more so collectively than just Phoebe and I and have learned a lot of you know pros and cons of things that went well, things that didn't went well. So we had three questions we wanted to kind of open to the floor briefly just to hear some feedback from you guys of your specific experiences here. So I'd love to hear like what got the most people to attend if you had a specific clever marketing approach or that poster that brought everybody in or uh, the way that you were able to spread the word. That's something everybody's always curious about. How do we get people to come in? So that's one question. Second, what was the most memorable specific activity you did? Uh, like we mentioned, having the, the, uh, the board where you list the things you bring to the table, the things you need, and then talk it over with, the, with, with pizza. Uh, that was a fun one, but there's plenty of better examples than that. And then finally, what sounded good on paper, but maybe went a little less well in practice? I have more than my fair share of borderline horror stories of things that were very well intentioned, but just didn't turn out exactly as I thought. And that's okay, because again, that's how we learn from this stuff. So um, if you're feeling confident, if you're feeling brave, if you want to extend that confidence and trust uh, with this community that we're in today, uh, let us know in the chat even just very succinctly, the type of workshop that's worked well for you or, or, or the type of activity that seems to get a lot of people to respond well. We'd love to hear it. While you're thinking about that, um, I just wanted to emphasize something that's cool about using Slingshot within these ideation workshops. Um, you might be thinking, What's, why do I need to use Slingshot? Why can't I just use a piece of paper? Um, but specifically for you guys as chapter presidents and chapter leaders, I know that in order to submit for awards or grants or any sort of um, accolades, you need a way to calculate the value of your impact. And that can be really, really challenging. Anytime I'm asked to put a number on change, especially being in a creative field, I'm like, I don't, I, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. Just, just ask, ask the people and they'll tell you. And, and Slingshot gives you a really unique opportunity to quantify your impact. You can, you can count how many ideas have been created within your chapter. You can, you can figure out when people have have logged on, you can, you can see, you can really gauge participation. It's just, it's going to be a really cool way for you to talk about engagement within your specific chapter with this really cool platform. And, and it's just going to make it easier for you at the end, in the long run, when you're trying to calculate this stuff. Um, I see, hmm. I see a submission here in the chat. Um, somebody's talking about how dinner brainstorming sessions have been really huge. Uh, Definitely agree. Obviously, food brings them in, but also having that kind of intimate atmosphere, I'm sure, is really helpful of, of helping people to feel, again, that sense of belonging, that sense of trust, and that uh, their ideas and contributions matter. So they say, amazing what happens when we bring together a handful of students, try to solve a few problems. Um, I would love to share probably the, the worst backfire I ever had uh, in terms of what sounded like a cool idea on paper. Uh, so I wanted to kind of have this fun uh, sort of underground vibe of this uh, club that I was starting uh, at college to try and get people to join this sort of campus-wide game. And it was supposed to be this kind of under the radar sort of thing where it wasn't officially sanctioned by any main group. We didn't have any funding. It was all just kind of thrown together with a couple of passionate uh, friends. And the way you would join this, this secret game was by looking at these kind of hidden gorilla advertisements we had on campus and then texting a phone number to get started. And so that's kind of how you joined was that you, 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 what I didn't realize I was asking was you just give a stranger your cell phone number and a surprising number of people did it uh, enough to bring it to the attention of campus security and um, student affairs committee be like, hey, is any of you sanction this? Anybody sign off on this? Do we know who this person is? 
nobody did because again it was supposed to be cool and underground and fun and so the cops got called to say oh yeah some random entity is collecting student data on campus and we have no idea what's happening with it and so eventually uh i had a relationship with the student activity center and i fessed up so oh, okay we'll take those down sorry about that you know all we've been Good stewards of the data it's all been encrypted and you don't have to worry about it but uh next time i'll be sure to ask permission for that part instead of forgiveness because that did not work out so well oh it looks like uh we have someone uh raising their hand uh sylvia did you want to to share something with us yes i just wanted to share one activity that was really went well but it also had some things that didn't go well we are uh, still online we um, ask one of our great entrepreneurs uh, we have adopted in a program, we have uh, adopted startup and he accepted it. We, we changed the, the session from CEO to make it at, at night, like 7 p.m. And it was a cooking event. This is a chef who created a, a barbecue sauce and we helped him with the marketing and because we actually our students helped him to rebottle the size because he was out of the market just because of the price but it wasn't the price it was the, the size of the bottle so little things and so he was very thankful and we invited him um a year ago to to give a cooking class but the and and that attracted a lot of people. Even though it was 7 p.m., a lot of faculty, people, staff, and students were so intrigued about about this because it, we also related it with uh, to promote our CEO, of course, um, and and to connect it with Instagram as a cooking. Uh, competition based on the speaker's recipe uh, everybody will create so it was very innovative because everybody will with with the same uh, specific ingredients that he was sharing uh, he shared his uh, recipe before but we wanted to see uh, a, a creative recipe out of like you just mentioned out of something already uh, already created and it worked out really well uh, we have a lot of instagram and we have a winner and also we have the speaker telling his story about how he became an entrepreneur all the challenges while he was cooking and while we have everybody in their own homes online is showing how they were cooking it was super super excited the thing that went bad it was that um uh it, it was a chaos or it created a chaos a, a little bit of how we decided who the winner was because everybody wanted to get the, the free sauces correct and and how to ship them that that was the chaotic part but uh that was a great um we kind of link uh um, creativity, innovation, with the with the background, the storytelling that was so compelling and it was so exciting, and we had a lot of great feedback for for that activity. That's awesome. I love I love that example of not only letting the you know all founders love sharing their founder story. Uh, that's always an exciting uh, memory that they get to cherish and, and share with others. But to be able to do that with a community, uh, especially sent around food which everybody loves and to kind of highlight local community members own projects and be able to get that kind of drum up that excitement and and share that story um within the community is a is a great way for people to again feel hey i feel supported i feel seen here like my ideas matter and it's so awesome that you guys went so above and beyond to help me out and come to this thing about my 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 sauces I know for me personally, I'd be super excited then to pay that forward for any other time another community event comes up. Um, it's just so easy to reciprocate then when you feel like you've been given that that love and, and belonging. Uh, you wanna you wanna make sure others get that as well. That's great. Thank yeah. you for sharing. Thank you. Oh, we have another question here that says, uh, would you talk more about uh, beginning the promotion for the workshop only two weeks out? How do you promote it during two week window? And you know, it's difficult to engage students after we return to campus post COVID and I noticed a number of remainder reminder emails for this uh, webinar. So they increased my interest in attending today. Many students don't read email and many of our students live off campus and are busy with work and their social life. 
Yeah. Great um, question. Yeah, Phoebe starts I'll off. speak a little bit to that. So I, I have found that repetition obviously really works. That's a, that's a good point. But within a, a shorter amount of time. And so in our experience, sending several reminder emails within a short span of weeks and incorporating social media posts, um, incorporating a lot of different, uh, different ways to get the message in. If you, if you shorten the amount of time in which they're hearing it, they, they hear it more. And so I, I found that whenever we started advertising things too far in advance, it, it got kind of, it, it felt like they'd been hearing about it for so long. And I think specifically with these types of ideation workshops, not just any event, because um, different events are going to have different spirits and different reasons why you would, you would start sooner. And sometimes, especially at a university level, you have to get approvals for things and you have to start early because there's just a lot of red tape to get through. For something like this, where we want it to feel low pressure, um, we decided on the two weeks thing because we we didn't want there to feel like there had been all of this build up, um, which feels like a barrier of entry. Uh, a lot of times, students I've found they just they kind of want to roll up. They want it to feel casual, and and for me coming in with a, a casual spirit and a silly spirit, I I didn't want to back build it up too much and so that was kind of the motivation for for starting the promotion only a couple of weeks out um i don't know if that answers your question mm -hmm. we i've also had some some experience even just using like mini events as promotion for other major events so you, you set up a table in the quad or whatever and you start giving something away whether it's food related or otherwise uh, just to get people's attention and when they're coming in that's when you can say oh yeah we got a big uh, event coming up X number of days out or tonight or however you want to structure it and just kind of bake that into part of your marketing campaign is sort of the boots on the ground um, approach to say, hey, let's just get a couple of people out there having you know good connections with, with people and, and helping spread the word that way. Because you're right, not everybody reads the email, uh, students and uh, adults included sometimes. Has anybody else had like similar uh, methods of, of grappling with that, that kind of promotion? Okay. Ryan, you have something you want to you share? Sure. Hey, I'll lower my hand. Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you. I'm Ryan. I'm the other co-founder of Slingshot. Um, but OK, we want to get students engaged, excited, and you're trying to create a groundswell of you know creativity, innovation, et cetera, on campus, which ultimately means that you don't own it. Um, you are cultivating something. But of course, all of us are not the agents of change ourselves. Um, so as much as you can you know what you sell people with is what you sell them to. So as much as you can shift your marketing process itself to be relational and engaging, that's great. My first company was a nonprofit called Wishing Well that raised uh, funds for clean water projects all over the world. We had thousands of students from Hawaii to Harvard and Yale doing water balloon, like world's largest water balloon fight documentaries, poetry slams, you name it. Um, but the reason why we would outperform every major nonprofit that operated on a college campus is something a game that we played called the called the 10 for 10 or 20 for 20 or whatever. Basically, you'd get your core students, which all of us have that, that small core group, whether it's 5, 10, 15, 20 people, you get them all in a room, buy them pizza, buy them coffee, do whatever. And then in that hour, say, we're all going to authentically connect with 10 other human beings or 20 other human beings in the next hour, not a copy paste. Facebook or Instagram message, like reach out to your friends, talk to them, tell them about this thing. And so one, that's way better marketing because if you have you know, 20 people reaching out to 20 people, you just had a 400 organic person reach. And on a college campus, you've gone from a 15, 20 person event to a 50 to 100 person event or beyond. And then now if you engage those people in the process of well, but uh, that's so running a movement of students at over 100 schools, when we had pull off things like the world's largest water balloon fight and have those massive innovation campaigns, it all came down to high powered relational um, activations uh, that you no know, as simple as that. And especially for something like this, where you're being invited into something that's creative, and it's everyone's game, not just the entrepreneurship students, the fine arts, the biology, we need all of you in the room. That's how we make this world work. And that's the expectation we're setting use your marketing in that process and you'll have a successful event you're here yeah <laughs> we really we really have relied on um students and especially students feeling like they have ownership over over something even if it's 
as small as an idea. Once you feel like you have ownership over it, you want to share it. Like you said, students are are busy with their social lives. And, and whenever you feel like you own something, it does kind of become part of your social life. And so we also, with these workshops, rely on, on the student leaders to reach out to their friends and their communities and, and kind of blend those two worlds together with the passion that they share for, for creativity. All right. Well, um, oh, yes, do we offer the workshop for free? That's a fantastic, potentially million dollar question. Um, more often than not, we wanted to have as few barriers of entry as possible. So um, yes, um, almost every single time I can, I can think of, if not every time, uh, we have the event um, be free so that participation and impact are the focus of what we're trying to generate. Uh, the money that it costs to run the event, which does you know, add up over time, is instead just seen as an investment to say like, this is, this is what we're pouring into our community. This is what we're pouring into um, our students because what we get in return more than just you know participation fees or activity fees um, is the the difficult to ascertain value that Phoebe was alluding to alluding to earlier of like this amazing creative output or this um, igniting this fire and spark for entrepreneurship uh, that can be extremely infectious and, and very helpful uh, but I'd love to hear um, if other people have different experiences with paid structures either for certain clubs or for certain events or, or or certain events that maybe are just above and beyond the the, the standard you know and in, held in an empty classroom kind of thing maybe you're renting out venues or some other thing like that uh how those kind of structures could work about to launch an idea lab workshop I'm struggling with registration to the event yeah it's it's hard to say like um when you're in it am i hitting a roadblock because people don't know about it or because they have heard about it and they're not interested about it and I'm not doing a good enough job communicating the value. Um, everybody in this room, I'm sure, has has definitely been there when it's coming close to a time and you're like, oh, but I've, I've, I've purchased so much guacamole. I hope there's enough people here to eat it. Um, you can be trepidatious about that buildup, but making sure in your promotional uh, materials, in your social media posts, in how you're spreading the word, that the value of like why they should come is front row center. Like Phoebe mentioned earlier, like what shiny sparkling thing are you offering? What is going to make their life better uh, for, for showing up and being in attendance? Um, and does this apply to them? Is this applicable to them? Are they allowed to want to come and join and benefit from these things? Because that's, that's a difficult spin to put on it, but um, a lot of that is done, like, like Ryan alluded to, especially through the, the relational type of outreach, where it's just like, hey, I know you personally, you're on my contact list, you're my friend, you're my roommate, you're my business partner, whatever. Um, let's, do you know anybody else that can come to this? I feel like this is really, really super helpful. This new um, idea lab workshop that, that we're launching, I feel like can, can really make a big change. Like, let's, let's see if we can get a couple more people to come in. Yeah, Thanks. I appreciate you, you sharing that with us because it's, that's a, that's a struggle for them. We've all been there for sure. We are so grateful that you guys have taken the time to talk with us and, and share with us. I want to go ahead and send the link to Slingshot, the CEO and Slingshot in the chat. Yep. Our team member Diana's got it. We'll be following up with this, but just for now, if you want to check it out, if you want to start launching, you feel, you feel so excited just talking about these ideas. You want to start typing, go ahead. It's right there. Um, yeah, just thank you. Uh, you can reach out to us at create at slingshot.io. I'll write that in the chat as well. If you have any more questions, we'll be happy to answer them. And we'd be happy to, and when you get the deck soon. I can also send that link right now if you'd like, just so that you have it. There is the email. And here's that. If you don't want to download it right now, like I said, we'll follow up with it. But thank you guys so much. Anything else from you, Landon? I'll give that a few minutes so that you can click those links. <laughs> no, we got we got the doc. Um, we got the uh, 
registration link and the email. I think that's good. Again, appreciate everybody coming today. Appreciate everybody contributing, uh, especially the, the the moments of vulnerability where we can express, hey, I got some little nervous. I got this thing coming up. Again, we've all been there. So so thank you. Appreciate the insights of what's worked well. Uh, we hope that um, the tool can, can be of service to you, can create some value to your students, can hopefully help launch new and exciting ideas in your communities. And uh, just, yeah, thank you again.